All right, so let me make up a problem here that will hopefully communicate the idea. So let's say that we have a function f of x that has the following look to it, 4x squared minus 3. And they want us to find the following. So let f of x equal that. Find f inverse prime of 97. So the goal here is to find the derivative of the inverse of f evaluated at the number 97. So let's, let's see what we know. We know that f of x is given to us as being 4x squared minus 3. And I know that you know how to find the inverse, not the derivative, no calculus yet, just uh, math 3 or pre-calc. Uh, the inverse of this, I saw your work, uh, the inverse, I saw your work so I know you know how to do this. So the inverse of that would be something like x plus 3 over 4 with the positive square root version, not the plus or minus because you only want half of it, so it's a function. So that's the original, and this is the inverse. What about, just out of curiosity, what about the derivative? A little bit of calculus now. The derivative of that. Now notice what they want. They want us to plug this number not into f, not into the inverse, and not into the derivative of f. They want you to take that number and to plug it into the derivative of the inverse. Well, this is the inverse, and it seems appropriate to write down the derivative of the inverse in this blank spot. But I, I feel kind of lazy. I kind of don't want to do that because it's kind of a pain in the butt. And there could be other problems where finding the derivative of the inverse would be a nightmare. Honestly, for this problem that I made up, finding this derivative wouldn't be that bad, but I, I wanna take this opportunity to show you a rule. So here is a fact, and I'm making this video primarily for this here. The derivative of the inverse of f is equal to one over the derivative of f evaluated at the inverse. And I want you to see that the goal for this problem is that, which looks like this. But doing this directly is kind of annoying. So we're gonna do this because this is equal to what we want, which looks like that. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this over here and I'm gonna apply it for the number 97. So let me rewrite this rule down here. But 97 goes in for the inputs and watch how this works. F inverse primed at 97 equals one over f prime evaluated at the inverse taken at 97. So why don't I, I grab a different color and let me grab this purple here. Nope, I'm already using purple. Let's grab this green. So I want you to focus only on that there. And maybe I can do some scratch work here. Check it out. Let's focus on the green. What is f inverse? of 97, well, we have the inverse right here. Let's plug 97 into there, and we can do mental math this afternoon. 97, plug them there into the inverse. 97 plus three is 100, over four is 25, square root it is five. So what I'm saying is, here, the green gets replaced by five. So this is f prime of five, and now this is what I want, and this is not bad, because look, you have the derivative right there. It's been looking at you for a few minutes now. So the derivative at five equals 40, because eight times five, right? You plug in five into the derivative there, there, that's 40. So 40 replaces that. So check it out. Final answer is one over 40. So the lesson to be learned here, they give you some function f, finding the inverse and finding the derivative of the original, they're probably not that bad, but finding the derivative of the inverse can sometimes be unmanageable. So in those instances, students are recommended to employ this rule, which really can come in clutch sometimes. So there you have it. I hope that helped. Let me know if you have any questions. Final answer is right here, 140th.